Now, if men were more valuable in society, why would they be the first ones sacrificed in war? Because they're not valuable. <laughs> so funny. That's hilarious. Men's lives aren't valuable, so that's that's why we should send them to war so they can die. That's it's funny. That's a good joke. Women are more sexist than men. That is a fact. The only reason why that's not obvious is because men are expected to tolerate sexism against them without complaint. While at the same time, women are encouraged to create epic tales of victimhood based on the tiniest microaggression. But it is inescapable. At the very core of our culture is the very sexist belief that says that women's lives are more valuable than men's. All women believe that. A lot of men believe that. When I did a poll on my channel asking men if they would give up their spot in a lifeboat if the Titanic was sinking for women and children, 41% said yes. But why? What makes women so valuable, so special that their lives are worth more than men's? Let's ask them. Are women more valuable than men? Yes. 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 Why? <laughs> why? Because we're better. <laughs> because they can uh, give birth to children and we can't. Because we give birth. And it, without women, you wouldn't be able to have kids. I mean, without men, you wouldn't be able to have kids technically. But like, who's going to raise them, you know? So if a woman can't have kids, does that mean she's less valuable? No. No. So what makes women more valuable even if they can't have kids? Because we're awesome, um, understanding, better communicators. I feel like we think logically, you know? Uh, they're nicer to look at in the, in the end. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll say that. Amongst the nonsense, they did actually correctly identify the truth. The reason that women are considered more valuable is because of children. That's it. Okay, that's the mystery solved. Women can give birth to children and men can't. When it comes to repopulation, you only need a few men, whereas every single woman is going to be special. But I think that it's time that modern women get a reminder that the reason that they are considered so special is because of children. That's it. Without that, you've got nothing. The more accurate way to say it is that children are special. You know, as a biological species, we highly value our continuation, passing on our genes to the next generation. That's one of our strongest instincts. That's why we value children so much. But you see there that women are not special. Children are special. Women just get the benefit of spillover specialness because they're the ones that create children. But modern women have forgotten that, that it's children that gives them their claim to specialness. Without that, they're not special at all. You saw in that clip that they're fumbling around for like additional reasons, like women are better to look at, women are more logical, women are better communicators, women can raise children and men can't. Just in case there's any doubt in my audience, I'm going to debunk that last one right now. Women are not better parents than men. That has been proven conclusively. Children raised to single mothers do significantly worse than children raised to single fathers. Reading from an article on Medium, it's extraordinarily well documented how much of a disadvantage children from single mother households have over children whose parents remain together, but less well documented is how much of a disadvantage they have over single father households. For examples, studies have found that children from single mother households are five times more likely to commit suicide than children from both unbroken households and single father households, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substances, 14 times more likely to commit rape, 20 times more likely to end up in prison, and 32 times more likely to run away from home. Understand that dads bring structure and discipline and they are responsible for socializing children in a unique way that women find very difficult to replicate. To put it harshly, men can do mum's role, but mums can't do dad's role. Yes, children need comforting and nurturing, and typically it is the mother that does that, but in her absence, men can absolutely do that. Men can be soft and sweet and playful. We can do mum's job. But what dad provides, women find very difficult to replicate. So it's not about raising children. It's in the creation of children that makes women seem more valuable than men are. But right now, modern women are playing a very dangerous game because they're throwing their weight around, acting extremely special, like they're so valuable. But at the same time, many of them are expressing zero interest in doing the very thing that gives them their specialness, which is creating children. Women, please think this through. Do you like your position of privilege? Do you like being the protected gender, the one that men provide for, the ones that we sacrifice for, the ones that we go to war to protect you? Do you like those privileges? If you do, then please think through, why do you like them? 
Think about what specifically it is that men see in you that they value, that they'd be willing to do all of that for. One of the top comments on that Titanic poll, would you sacrifice your spot on lifeboat for women and children? One of the top comments said this, for children, yes. For a woman that has children and she's with them, yes. For a woman alone, no. Let me state this as plainly as I can. If women are not doing the thing that makes them women, the very thing that men need women for, if they're not doing that, then they are no longer special. We don't need women to be men. We are men. We've got the masculine side of life covered. You're not going to outman a man. If you want to be treated as special, then you need to be a woman, which means doing womanly stuff, things that men can't do. Well, in other words, okay, is a man less of a man if he can't change a flat tire? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Is a woman less of a woman if she can't cook a meal from scratch? We're biased. We're women. No, that's not a good answer. Damn right that's not a good answer. The fact is, is that men value women when those women are providing things that men want, but that they can't create themselves, namely femininity. And the most essentially female thing that a woman can do is to give birth. It is an irreducible biological superpower that no man is ever going to be able to replicate. But to a lesser degree, all feminine behavior is going to be valued for men because of its difficulty to replicate. When a woman is acting like a woman, then men are happy to sacrifice on her behalf because they value what she's providing. They value her femininity. We're happy to give her that protected status because she is a feminine woman. But it is the absence of that femininity that is pissing off so many men these days. We see modern women contributing nothing special, no femininity, and yet still demanding special privilege and status. And of course, if you point this out to a woman, she has a very convenient way to dismiss you. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, but first I want to share with you my latest creation, The Hero Circle. Many of you don't know this, but for the last 12 months, I have been facilitating two online men's groups drawn from members of my Patreon community. We meet once a week for around two hours to discuss relationships, morality, goals, and values. We utilize the power of social feedback to hold somebody accountable when they need to be called on their shit, but also provide emotional support when somebody's going through something tough. These men's groups are called the Hero Circle, and they're my favorite part of the week. So does something like this interest you? Would you like to have a dedicated time each week to talk with like-minded guys, to offer and receive support, to practice social skills, honesty, courage? Because if this sounds interesting to you, I'm pleased to say that today is our public launch. You can click on the website link below if you want to find out more about how this all works. On the website, all your questions can be answered, and you can sign up to join one of the Hero Circles. There's even a heroine circle just for women. But if you do want to join, I encourage you to act quickly because there's only 40 spots available. I do hope to expand it in the future. So yeah, if you're curious, click on the website and you can find out more. All right, back to the video. Why would there be any incentive for women to change when they can currently pick and choose the best of both worlds? We don't do that. That's a sexist view to think that we pick and choose. Ah, uh, yes, the old pointing out our hypocrisy or our inconsistency is sexist. Women always count on that label being scary for men, like, oh no, I couldn't possibly be called a sexist. That's terrifying. I'm just going to back away. Unfortunately for them, I don't give a shit. You can call me sexist. Coming from you, I would consider it a badge of honor. It's not going to scare me off. I'm going to say what I think, which is that women, unless you're acting like a woman, I don't see you as special. You have no privileged status in my eyes. If you've completely rejected your own femininity, then why should I treat you as though you're special? Hell no, we're now equals, and if you want that final spot in the lifeboat, you're going to need to fight me for it, because there's no fucking way I'm going to sacrifice my precious life for yours. Let me be clear, I'll still treat you with respect and the dignity that I would afford any fellow human, but unless you're a woman acting like a woman, you're going to get no special recognition from me. I'm going to treat you like an equal, and guess what? I don't think you're going to like that. I don't think you really have any conception of what it's like to be a man, to be accountable for every mistake, to get told that when you fuck up, there is no rest until you fix it. Oh, you're emotional at the moment? Well, too fucking bad. The job isn't done. Back to work. Oh, there's dangerous work to be done? Your turn. Oh, it looks like there's some hard physical labor that's needed. After you. There are dangerous criminals attacking us. The military needs a draft. Okay, well, it's time for you to step up. What, now you want to play the woman card? Nuh-uh. Do not give me that look. If I'm going into battle and I'm risking physical harm and death, then you are too. No special protection, no special privileges. I'm going to treat you like I would treat a fellow man, which means that I only see value in you if I can count on you to do your fucking job. So 
How's this sounding, ladies? It's pretty shit, right? Have you noticed how many women in corporate settings complain about being the victim of sexism, being discriminated against because they're women. In so many cases, that is not at all what's going on. What's actually occurring is that now that you've stepped into this traditionally male environment for the first time in your life, you're not being treated as a woman, you're being treated as a regular employee, which means there's no special privileges or protections. Usually, everybody is so soft and delicate and patient with you because you're a woman. But now that you're in the business world, that doesn't count for anything. You need to perform, you need to do your job. That's it. These women are so used to being privileged that when they actually get equal treatment to a man, to them it feels like discrimination. But let me remind you that it does not need to be this way. You can go back to your soft existence being protected from all the pointy bits of life. You can go back to enjoying your special protected status, that's fine. The only thing that you need to give up is your expectation of those privileges coming without responsibilities. If you want respect as a woman, then you need to act like a woman. Hey mama. Hi honey. How was the honeymoon? It was good. It was so romantic and so special. Oh, that sounds so good. But um, <laughs> but when we got back from the honeymoon, he's changed. He started using these awful four letter words that I've never even heard of. Mom, can you please come pick me up? What, what did he say? What were the four letter words? <laughs> he started using words like, like dust and cook and, and iron and wash. Like, what? Pick me up, Mom. It's a funny clip because it shows how the older generation of women, they cannot relate to the entitlement of these modern women who act as though there's nothing more oppressive and miserable than being a traditional woman. I mean, zooming out, just how fucking batshit crazy is our modern culture? Shouldn't feminism be about trying to protect femininity instead of desperately trying to wipe it out of existence? Why do feminists consider it a victory when women act like men? How is that something to celebrate? And it's all ridiculous, this goal, because women would rather be women. They enjoy that, that's playing to their strengths. They would certainly rather be a woman than be a man. When it comes to splitting chores, if a husband and wife are like, okay, two things need to get done. Somebody needs to stay in the kitchen and cook dinner. The other person needs to go outside with a shovel and dig a huge ditch. Guess what? Most women are going to choose to stay in the kitchen. Likewise, if a couple gets pregnant and they're dividing up their responsibilities, it's like, okay, somebody needs to go out into the corporate world, be amongst all those hyper ambitious, competitive guys and try and make a bunch of money for us to be able to have our family. And the other person gets to stay at home and sing nursery rhymes and decorate the room in pink. Guess what? Most women would rather stay at home. This isn't a surprise. It's because they're women. They like femininity. It's just that they have been lied to. They have been brainwashed out of their own natural instincts. And oftentimes the cure for that brainwashing is a solid, high quality man to snap them back into reality. Nobody talks about how like life changing it is to finally be with like a manly man, like a masculine man who takes control of the relationship for the first time in your life when you're so used to having that role. Like my masculine energy was always on the top. Like I, I got that big masculine energy. I don't know. I just big personality. And now that I'm with my boyfriend, he took me out of my masculine energy and put me in a feminine era for real. Like I never once in my life have i ever listened to a man fuck men i don't like men i hate men but my boyfriend oh dude anything he says okay like okay <laughs> who am i i like yesterday i wanted a stanley cup and uh, he takes care of our financials so i was talking to him about it he was like i don't know babe like let me think about it and i was like okay the only one like who's a man to tell me what to do but i don't know I <laughs> it's a fascinating thing watching somebody's brainwashing get wiped away in real time. Now I've got these two graphs to show you. This one is about women's happiness as it relates to achieving her fertility goals. And this one plots that data over a long period of time. I go through these graphs and explain their significance in the full version of this video, which is available on my Patreon. What you see here on YouTube, these are just the shortened abridged versions of my videos. If you'd like to see the full version of this video, come over to Patreon. Also a reminder, if you're interested in joining one of the hero circles, check out the website in the description box below.